Welcome everyone to the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. Thank you for joining us. Today we're covering the third dimension, named views and cameras in AutoCAD 2016. And our presenter will be Victoria Studley. So I do want to mention as a reminder that our third dimension track in our webinar is primarily for full AutoCAD and not so much AutoCAD LT, but LT users, you will have the view manager available to you, just not the 3D workspaces. And hopefully some of the features uh, you see here will entice you towards 3D AutoCAD. So now for a quick introduction, our presenter, Victoria Studley. She's an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist based out of Manchester, New Hampshire, and she's a veteran with our webinar series. You probably heard her speak before, and I'm your uh, moderator today, Martin Stewart, also a support specialist with Autodesk, and I'm based in Portland, Oregon, or just outside of Portland in our Lake Oswego office. We also have with us here lurking in the background today the infamous Volker Coco. He's also based out of the Lake Oswego, Oregon office, and he'll be assisting us with some of our uh, Q&A sessions online. So just a little quick review of our webinar series that we have. This is the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar, and it's hosted by our technical support specialists. All three of us are in that capacity, and there is a question and answer uh, chat window that you're welcome to use during the presentation, during Victoria's presentation. We'll try and keep up with the questions, but we'll also save a little time at the end for a Q&A as well. Our webinar today will be recorded and made available, and links will be provided in your uh, email you'll receive for the post-webinar survey. We do want to mention we have some upcoming webinar topics that will be really great. The next one in our series will be Troubleshooting AutoCAD, January 28th, and then you see those listed on your screen there through February. So the webinar does make available afterwards the data sets that you'll be seeing, the PowerPoint slide deck as well, and you'll be able to download those and try some of the stuff out that we'll be demonstrating for you here today. And then to follow up on this webinar, you can also visit our uh, landing page for recorded uh, webinars on uh, YouTube. And be sure to sign up for future webinar series or have uh, friends that uh, haven't joined us yet. You can refer them to our landing page there. Also a great resource. Um, some people aren't aware of is our community forums where you can get on there and share questions, share your expertise, and there's a link for that as well, including our beta sites if you'd like to help uh, trial and test some of our next AutoCAD releases. So at this time we'd like to take a couple uh, quick polls for you to share some information with us. We'll go ahead and launch our first poll. Give me just one moment. So is this your first Autodesk help webinar, yes or no? And uh, so a lot of you are returning. We do ha have some new ones. Welcome. Hope you continue to join us in this uh, series. We'll go ahead and close that poll. We'll share the results. And you see the vast majority of you are returning. So great, thank you very much, and welcome back. So our next poll is, coming up, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? If you could go ahead and pick that. So it seems mostly AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, which makes sense for our webinar, but there are also some AutoCAD verticals being used. So I'll go ahead and close the poll and we'll 
show you the results here. So there's the, the split. And let's go ahead and do one more. Do any of you use the following in AutoCAD? Are you already using named views, cameras, model views, animation? So a lot of us uh, have not tried these yet. And then let me go ahead and give you a few more moments to make your choices. And we'll go ahead and close that poll and show you the results. So pretty even split from those who have used name views, model views, and some of you none of these. So hopefully for everybody, there'll definitely be something to take home and use in your AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT practice. Okay, let me make sure this is closed down. We'll go ahead and move to our next slide. So today's agenda is named views and cameras. And Victoria is going to take us through a sequence of these features, view manager, named view properties, view camera properties. And if we have time, we'll talk about how to set up the animation motion path and use that. So you see the, the view manager here to the side. So these save views, these name views can be a tremendous help for you during design and modeling, but also in the documentation phase. These views, you can kind of think of them as a bookmark in 3D space. And among other things, they enable you to return to that view instantly with all the layer states intact, and rather than have to set that up each time. And of course, they're also very integral to rendering images and setting up finished graphics that you want to do output from your project. So as, as I mentioned, this is um, primarily for AutoCAD, but even if, a, if you're working on a 2D only project, you may benefit from named views and being able to return to that view and its layer state. So as Victoria walks us through these features, We'll want to be thinking of various ways we can use them to our advantage in our work, whether we're using AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or an AutoCAD vertical. The view manager is found in all of them. We are introducing a new data set to this 3D webinar series. This is uh, an original data set that Victoria and I have been working on. It's a work in progress, and it will be available for your download. And future iterations of this may appear in future webinars, so we hope you uh, continue with us this year as we uh, enjoy doing this series with you on the third dimension. It'll be about once a, once a month on average, so we hope you return to the series. So as we mentioned, we'll be focusing on views. Using this uh, data set, both Victoria and I have an architectural background, so this is an architectural model, but all of this, everything you see today is, of course, applicable to other disciplines, industries. You can use it for product design and furniture design just as easily as you can for architect design. So just because it's an architectural model, it really applies to anything that you'd be doing in AutoCAD in 3D. I should also mention, though, that modeling and how we made this data set is not really the focus of today's topic, but we will be covering a lot of modeling topics in future webinars. So today, working with views will include camera views. It's a bit of a chicken and egg problem because we also need to talk about lighting and materials and rendering at some point. It all works together, but we've broken out uh, views and camera views for today's session, and we look forward to covering those other topics with you in the future. So at this point, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Victoria. Thanks, Martin. I'm really excited to uh, jump into the presentation here and talk a little bit about name views and cameras. Uh, let me show my screen first. 
and make sure that everything's up and running. Can you see my screen? Yes, I see it. Excellent. All right, so I have the model open here, and the first thing that I'm going to do, and you'll probably want to do this if you're following along, um, is switch to a, a workspace that has the view manager uh, more accessible in one of the tabs here. So right now I'm in the drafting and annotation workspace. I'm just going to go down to the right hand corner, click on the workspace gear, and I'm going to switch to my uh, 3D modeling workspace. Uh, this is also available in 3D Basics. Um, if, uh, if for some reason you're missing the, um, uh, the view panel, uh, let's say you wanted to put it on like your manage tab or wherever, if you have a custom one, you can right click in the gray space off to the right and go down to show panels, or sorry, show tabs and pick um, a view out of there. And it, it will uh, show up here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, tabs, uh, visualize. It's on the visualize tab there. It shows up in a couple of different places. Um, here we go. So on my visualize tab, uh, off to the left here, views is the uh, the panel that we're going to be working with. And you'll see that the view manager is right here. And then there's a little drop down list of all of the named views and cameras that exist in my drawing right now. And then there's a, another button here to get into the view manager. Uh, you can also use the command line entry, V-I-E-W, view, and the view command will open the view manager for you. So if you can't find it in the ribbon, type view at the command line and it'll pop right open for you. All right, so now that we are in the view manager, let me just walk through this real quick. Uh, you have a few options here. I'm just going to show you uh, your model views here. And if you don't have any custom named views, uh, there won't be anything listed under the model views tab. Let me show you that real quick in a new drawing. If I type in view. So there's nothing listed here under model views, but if you click on it, it'll tell you exactly what would be there and what you can use it for. Gives you a nice little description right in the window. Uh, same goes for layout views. Uh, layout views will contain those paper space uh, viewports that you, that you add into your, your uh, paper space layouts. And then preset views are views that are going to be in every drawing by default. You can't modify them. Um, they are the same views that you'll see uh, listed on your view cube, top, bottom, left, right, front, back, and then your isometric views, uh, southwest, southeast, northeast, and northwest isometric views. And you can set them current from here. You can create new views and when you create a new view, uh, the default is whatever view you happen to be in. And you give it a name, new view. And we'll just leave the default properties here so that I can show you what happens in the view manager. Uh, this right here creates a new custom view which shows up under model views. And then you get all of these different properties that you can adjust. I'm just going to widen this so that we can see everything at once. Now you can rename it if you want to. You'll go into, um, uh, into here and just rename it if you need to. Uh, you can set a category, which is uh, something we won't really be touching on today because it's tied to the Sheet Set Manager. Uh, you can change the UCS, so if you have multiple UCSs, uh, named UCSs in your drawing, you can change that here. Uh, this determines whether or not, the layer snapshot determines whether or not um, you're taking a snapshot of the layers that are on and off at the time that you create the view. Um, you can come in and update this later. Uh, the default is yes, um, but let's say you decide that you want a bunch of layers on that were off at the time uh, that you created the view. You can turn those layers on, come back into the view manager, select your view, and click on the update layers button here, and it'll update all of the layers to the current status. You can change your annotation scale that's associated with the view. Um, in, 
let's see, uh, there's visual style. Uh, so you can set the visual style in the full version of AutoCAD. This is not available in AutoCAD LT though. Um, so there are all of your visual styles saved in the drawing. Uh, the same goes for background and live section. These aren't available in LT. Um, you can change your background to a solid color, a gradient, a custom image, uh, the sun and sky settings. Um, and then if you click on edit, it'll give you the option to pick one of those four options. And um, the settings are nested within the dialog here. And then if you have a live section named in your drawing, you can choose to enable that live section for your saved view, for your named view. Um, let's see, I'm not gonna get into animation settings right now. We'll save that for the end if we have time. Um, for your view, uh, well, for camera views specifically, uh, you have to identify the location of the camera and the location of the target that the camera is pointing at. And you can do that here. These are your X, Y, and Z for the location of the camera and your X, Y, and Z for the target um, where the camera is pointing at. You can adjust the roll angle of the camera, um, which is the, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it's the rotation of the view within the viewing plane. And we'll get into that when we start actually looking at the cameras here in a couple of minutes. Um, but think of it as, uh, as if you're taking your monitor and rotating it uh, in front of you. That's your roll angle. Um, the height and width um, is exactly what it sounds like, the height and width of the area that you're looking at with that camera. And then this decides whether or not perspective is on or, on or off in the view. Um, so whether you're looking at it in a parallel um, manner or uh, in a perspective. And then your lens length can be set here and your, your lens length and field of view are tied together. So this is the length of your lens and if you change it to like 35, uh, you'll notice that the field of view changes to 54 and vice versa. If I change the field of view to 20, my lens length is going to change to a longer length. So lens length is measured in meters and the field of view is measured in angle units, the current angle units of the drawing. Okay. Uh, you can also set a clipping plane for your view. Um, this decides whether objects are clipped uh, inside or outside of the view. You can set a front clipping plane, a back clipping plane. Um, we're not going to delve into this in particular today. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of this, go back into our data set here. Okay, uh, one other thing, let's see, we can talk about model space viewports right now. So oh, can I interrupt a moment? Yes, yes, Martin, hi. Can you bring up the view manager again? I can. So just a few quick comments. So this was a really nice overview to see what this view manager looks like and anyone working in an AutoCAD vertical, even AutoCAD LT, you type in view and you're gonna get this view manager. So some of this stuff, um, is going to make a whole lot more sense as Victoria goes through the demonstrations. But one thing that came up on the chat window was UCS, or, or use of the term UCS. Can we see an example of that in, oh, in yes. the yep. menu there? Absolutely, and that's why I'm moving back into the drawing here. As we go through a couple of model views uh, in the presentation here, um, we're going to look at uh, couple of different options for the UCS. Uh, this right. one's this one is unnamed, which means the UCS was rotated. Um, so just that, that that abbreviation UCS stands for user coordinate system and then there are variations here with a world coordinate coordinate system and then a unique correct. user coordinate system they might set up. Yep. Just want well, to throw that in there. Yeah, so just a, as a quick overview like you're saying here, the world coordinate system would be the default. Uh, coordinates, mm -hmm. and then any anything other than that, I, the world coordinate system is your default UCS, uh, user coordinate system. Um, but if you rotate the UCS at all, 
that's a custom UCS. And so um, we've named a couple of them here, LFSE, Plan East, Rotated. And then you'll notice that sometimes, um, let me do it here. Sometimes you'll notice that it's unnamed. So if I manipulate my, my UCS to something wacky, it's going to list here as unnamed. And if you save a view while it's unnamed, it's going to be associated with an unnamed UCS. And you can change that in the view manager by going into your view and just adjusting it here. Where was the one that I, there we go. This one was unnamed. So I could come back in here and change it to any of the named UCSs or the world UCS, which is always that, that default um, by switching it in the view manager. That answer the question, awesome. Martin? Okay. Yes, thank you. Perfect. All right, um, so let's, uh, Let's go back into the drawing here. Um, another way to make your uh, 3D modeling experience a little smoother, a little easier to handle, is to utilize the model space viewports. And if you come right up here in the left-hand corner, there's a little plus minus symbol for viewport controls. And if you click on it, it'll give you this little fly out and if you look at viewport configuration list, it'll show you a list of model space viewports. Right now we're in single, um, but if I pick on two vertical, watch, I'll end up with two active, um, I'm sorry, two model space viewports. I can make one active and switch it to a different view. We'll just switch it to top view here. Say you want it to be modeling in the top view and you also want it to see a nice 3D view, um, maybe zoomed into a detail somewhere. Um, so if I was working on my stairs, if you'll see I, I select my stairs in the 3D view and they'll show up in that, um, in that left-hand view as well. Makes it a little bit easier to work on 3D objects. You can look at them in, in multiple angles at the same time. If I come back in here, you'll see there are a bunch of different configurations. Uh, three right. And I'm just going to pick a couple of different... Um, views so that you can see exactly what's going on here. So I'll pick on my stairs again and you can see it highlights those stairs in all three drawings in three different configurations. Um, for the sake of this presentation to make it a little easier to um, to see what's going on I'm just going to leave it as the, um, the single viewport there. But know that those viewport, those uh, model space viewports are there um, and they do come in handy. You can uh, um, divide the screen into multiple different viewports and manipulate them independently uh, and then close them if you don't need them anymore. <clears throat> so, so just to interject and point out the irony here in that we're doing a webinar on views and camera views, but our terminology here gets a little confusing sometimes in that these are also called viewports. So the viewports are, are not uh, to be confused with the views that you were showing earlier in View Manager, right? Correct. Yes, these are model space viewports, um, which are sort of like your um, sort of like your uh, paper space viewports, where you can make one active at a time and work in it and manipulate it. Versus a view is going to be um, a single. Uh, let me see, what am I ISO hidden? There we go. Uh, it'll be a single view of the model um, within your viewport. Yeah, perfect, cool. All right, um, so let's jump right in and we will um, create a couple of named views here. Um, this one here I've created, it's a, an ISO hidden view. Um, let me show you a couple of the other ones here. So this one here, is a front perspective view. So if you look down here, it's got an unnamed UCS, and then it's also in perspective. Uh, so I can change this to parallel, and what we get is a nice front view of the model there. And if I want to change, um, I'm just going to change the UCS back to WCS, and from here, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to zoom all the way out here and show this front view and be able to zoom into it um, about this far, I can type in the view command 
and then say new. And I'm going to name it um, front parallel. And then I can come through here and I can change a lot of the properties in here. So I can choose the current display or let's say I didn't like the zoom of that. I could define a window um, that I want to zoom into um, by picking on that radio button and then selecting an area. Um, I'm comfortable with the current view, so I'm just going to select that there. It's going to save a layer snapshot with the view, and I'll come back in and modify that in a minute and show you what that does. I like the world UCS here, so I'm going to leave it. I don't have any live sections. I do want to change the visual style, though. So let's say we want to change the visual style to um, let's do something. Let's say X-ray. Um, X-ray sometimes makes it a little easier, actually, to work with these camera views, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. All right, and I want the default background, which is this nice black, um, but know here, and you'll see a couple of views later, um, that you can change this to a solid color, um, something really audacious like that purple, or you can click on a little color swatch here and change it using the color picker or using an index color. If you want a nice bright orange background, you could do that. Um, oh, I'm going to go back to my default. Uh, the same goes with the gradient, and you can pick a custom image or set your sun and sky if you're doing a rendered view. Um, but let's just leave this one at default for now. And we'll say OK. And now you'll notice that this uh, ended up in the list here. It's called Front Parallel. And you can set it current from here. And you can see all of those settings that we just saved down through X-ray. Um, let's just see what it looks like. We'll click Apply, and you'll notice the change and say OK. So there's my X-ray view of the model. Uh, you'll notice those cameras pop right out. They're a little easier to see exactly where they are. So let's say that these are in the way, right? I can't select any of my camera views, but the purpose behind me making this view, um, for instance, might be to select those cameras a little easier. Um, so what I can do is go into my layer manager. Um, well, actually, I don't need to go into the layer manager. I will, um, I'm just going to freeze a couple of the layers. I'll use my layer freeze, and I'll freeze the layer that that's on. And let's say I just don't want to see any of those windows, and I don't want to see these towers or those walls. There we go. So I've frozen a few things. Um, but if I were to um, go back to my Visualize tab and pick that uh, front parallel view again, since I didn't save any changes, it's going to revert to the original layer state that was saved there. So all those layers turn back on. Okay, so I'll go back in. I'll freeze these. Freeze these again. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right. So I've frozen a couple of these. Now if I go into my view manager and I pick on front parallel and click on update layers, and apply. Now, I'll, um, I see that that wasn't completely clear, so what I'm going to do is just switch to one of these other, my ISO hidden view. I'm going to switch back to this front parallel view now. And you notice that it updates that layer state, so all of those layers are now frozen in that view. So it makes things a little easier to select, a little easier to work with. Okay. Let's see. So one one thing to mention too is just the simple benefit of navigation and getting you back to this place. Because when you're working in a really complex model and you're maybe experimenting with UCS and perspective and layers and you can get lost in a model. And it can get frustrating getting back to a point, but with view, you can just restore that view and you're instantly back there. So 
that's just a, a really handy advantage of using named views, among other things. This is this is very true. Um, let me show you a couple of the ones that we've saved in this uh, in this drawing here. I'm trying to remember which ones are cameras and which ones are not. Um, we'll do an elevation. So there's a realistic looking elevation here. That's one of the views that we saved um, from the east. There's another one from the southeast. So I might just interject too that we didn't put a lot of focus on lighting here. Some of these images and views are showing up kind of dark, uh, Victoria, but uh, ah. like this one even. But the focus wasn't on lighting. We look forward to another webinar on, on lighting, which works hand in hand with these views. Yes, yes. Um, I, I hope that we can see them all right. Um, I did try to put a lighter background on a couple of them. So this one, for this instance, one this one, for instance, I put... Um, I saved a view of the front facade in a perspective, um, and I'm going to show you in a second uh, when we start talking about cameras exactly how I created this. Um, I also created one that's almost the same, except, sorry, I have to turn the sun off for this one. Come on. There we go. Um, this would... <laughs> Sorry, this is a, um, a rendered view of the same view there, but uh, you don't want to be working in realistic all the time because it, it'll bog you down a little bit. Um, so I saved this other one here just so that I could work in that 2D hidden view. It's a little easier to see, a little easier to manipulate the model. Um, it's, not as in, uh, in, it's not as taxing on your graphics card as you're working. Um, okay, so... Now we'll talk a little bit about camera views. Um, now the difference here is that camera views are very good for rendering and animation. And so I have a couple of them in the model already. And I'll zoom out and show you, for instance, this one right here. This is the one that we were just looking at. This is that, uh, what did we call this one? Uh, facade, perspective, and this is the hidden view. So you can see um, in the camera preview what that's going to look like. And that's one of the cool things about the camera versus, a, uh, versus just a named view. So the camera is going to show you that preview. And you can switch the visual style right in this camera preview box. So if we wanted to see, let's say, sketchy or we wanted to see a wireframe or x-ray maybe, you can see that really quickly in the preview. Um, so I'm going to go back to my hidden there. Um, let's say that we wanted to move this camera around, though. Um, one of the ways to do that is to grab the camera by its grips, and I'll zoom right in on the camera. You know, this is a little bit hard to do in a perspective view. So I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to zoom in on that camera there, but I, I'll get there, right? Okay, and you can see how difficult that is. And once you get down there, you can grab this and you can sort of eyeball it and say, you know, maybe I want, maybe I just want to move it down a little bit. Maybe I just want to move it to the side. And you'll see that, um, you'll see that adjust a little bit. You can do the same thing here. And you can see the, um, there's my target. So you can see the preview change as I move. And this is just kind of eyeballing it. And, and that's great if, you, if you're just trying to get a rough idea. But if you're, trying to be, um, if you're trying to be exact with your camera placement, I recommend opening up your properties palette. And I'll dock mine on the side here so that you can see what I'm working with and move my camera preview over. Uh, you'll see that those same settings that I pointed out earlier in the view manager will pop up here in your properties palette. So your camera position, the X, Y, and Z coordinates will change the position of your camera. So let's say I want that to be exactly 70 feet. And I want this one to be exactly 75 feet. You'll watch the camera move. You can see the preview move, but it's much more exact. Maybe I want that to be 250 feet exactly. And that gets me the precision that I'm looking for. And the same thing with the target. 
So if I move my target, I want this to be exactly 60 feet. And that one to be exactly 70. I don't want that, you know, four and three eighths inches in there. I want this to be exactly 150 feet. Um, that can get you the precision that you're looking for. Uh, you can change your lens length, again, by touching the grips, or you can come in here and say, I know I want this to be 35 millimeters. And that'll get you a 35 millimeter shot. You can change your roll angle here. If I want to switch at 90 degrees, you notice that it flips on its axis. If I want it to be 45 degrees, you can see it turn to be 45 degrees. And, and you can get really artistic with these cameras. Uh, if you're looking for some really unique shots of your model, uh, this is the way to do it. So I'm going to go back into the view manager here. And I'll show you the difference. Um, one of the cool things about camera views is that the cameras can be copied from drawing to drawing, while your model views cannot. And you can tell the difference really quickly in the, in the view manager by looking at um, the little icon next to them. So there's a little icon here that looks like a magnifying glass with a piece of paper and a dialog box. That is a model, a, a named view. And that, because there's nothing to select, you can't actually copy that over without using an add-on um, or converting it to a camera. And this was actually a trick that Martin and I figured out while we were going, hey, how do I get these names views into the new model that we just uh, updated here? And um, we played around with it a little bit and figured out if you turn the perspective on, um, so let's use, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's use one of these named views as an example. We'll use that front parallel one that we created earlier. And let's say we want to copy this out to another drawing. We really like it. It's got all the settings the way we want them. Uh, it definitely applies to another model, but we can't find a way to get it in there. If you switch perspective from on, uh, from off to on, and then click OK, and then come back into your view manager, and you look at it now, there's a camera right next to it. This has been converted to a camera view. So now if we go, I'm just going to set this current. And we'll zoom out a little so we can find it. It's not this one. There it is. Ah, there we go. So front parallel. This is the one, this used to be a named view, and we just converted that to a camera. Again, that was by going into the view manager, selecting the named view, and switching it from um, parallel to perspective. So you turn the perspective on, and that converts it into a camera. Now another handy trick is that if you don't want that to be a perspective view, you still want it to be parallel, you can turn that off, apply the change, Say OK, come back in here, and it should still be listed as a camera there. I don't know if the glyph still shows up, though. Let me check here. It does not. OK, so the glyph won't show up anymore, the camera glyph. But when you get that camera view into the other drawing, you can turn it back into parallel, and it'll convert it back into a named view. Victoria, could you comment on what the steps are to actually get it into another drawing? Oh, sure. Um, you can copy it like any other object. You can right-click and go to your clipboard. And I recommend saying copy with game. Ugh, I can't talk today. Um, I recommend copying with a base point and just using 000 and going into that new drawing and pasting it at 000. Oh, did I get it? So when you type in view, that camera should now appear. Hmm. Let's see. Let me copy it here. This worked for me the other day. Just pick here.
There we go. Copy of, okay, so it'll show up as a copy, copy of facade perspective, but now it is in this drawing here. Um, you'll see that the, the preview won't update um, until you update the, uh, the view in your actual drawing here. But you will be able to see it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it just didn't go the first time. And there it shows up in this new drawing. So you can just copy paste. So that is very cool. And what the advantage we found with that is we're working on different versions of the model, which is not uncommon in offices. So if you have two different drawings floating around there and you want to merge the camera views, that's the easy way to do it, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, in case you're finding these, um, if you notice, I, okay, so if you see the camera glyph here, let's say I want to zoom in to this one right here, the facade perspective uh, hidden. You can right click on it um, instead of having to go to the view pull down. If you know exactly which camera you're looking for, but you don't know what it's named, you can select the camera, right click it, and say set camera view, and it'll bring you right to that camera view. Um, so from here, you might notice that the camera glyphs get in the way sometimes. You're looking at them, you know, they're they're buried in your model. And after a while, I mean, we only have a couple of camera views named in here. But if you have a really complex model and you do a lot of rendering, you might notice that they uh, clutter up your drawing really quickly. So you can turn the camera glyphs off in the Visualize tab here where we've been. Um, by clicking on this camera glyph, camera display, and it turns all those camera glyphs off. You can turn them back on. You can also use the camera display system variable or a command here, camera display, and set it to zero, and that'll turn them off. Enter it again, one to turn them back on. If, let's say you have a model and you want all of your cameras to come in at the same height, like uh, this one, for instance, um, the actual meat of the model that we've been working on so far really starts around 70 feet. Um, so if you want all of your cameras to start at a base height of 70 or, you know, pick your height, uh, there's a camera height system variable that comes in, in really handy. So you can say camera height. And right now it's set to zero, zero. That's the default. It's always going to be set to zero. But you can change it for the drawing by saying 70 feet. And then when you insert a new camera, uh, you can either use this create camera um, button up here, or you can just type in the camera command. And it'll give you the glyph right here. Okay, if you see, um, it tells me that the camera height is at 70. I believe. Oh, this didn't do it. Okay. All right, it made a liar out of me. Um, that looked like it was at 70. It's at 77 feet. Yeah, that looked right. Yeah, I wonder if it just works if you're in top view or something. Um, hmm. Let me try again. Uh, camera height, 70 feet. And create a new one. Here we go. Okay. Aha. Okay. So if you're in top view, uh, if you're in a top view creating a camera, it will default to 70 feet. Um, for the height of the camera. Um, but if you're placing it manually in model space, it will override that setting. So let's go back here and we'll create another camera. And let's say we want to create one from this corner over here. I'm just going to eyeball it and put it right in and sort of eyeball where I want to view to. And you'll notice that this cone um, that's what we're going to be looking at. So it gets uh, a little wider as we move it around. So you can get a rough estimation of what you're going to be looking at. As soon as I click, 
I get this right hand drop down menu and you can change all of the settings of your camera in here as well. The name, the location of the camera, the height, the target, um, your lens length, your clipping plane, and the view. So I'm just going to exit um, because I can change all of those things over here in the properties palette as well. Or as I mentioned before, now I'm going to note that this one is named camera four. And this brings up another good point. If I come in here and I'm searching for that camera and I really want to go into the view manager and edit the settings. Um, if you have a dozen or two dozen cameras in here, it gets confusing real fast which camera you're using. And you'll see that we have a couple in here that um, I could not tell you where these are or what they're looking at. Um, so I'd actually have to go to them. So it's wise to name your cameras um, specifically so you know exactly what you're looking at when you click on that camera view. Uh, the same goes for your model views. Okay, so let's say that you are moving around with a view cube or you're using 3D Orbit and you find a really interesting view. Um, this was how I created the, the, uh, that front view here. I just sort of eyeballed it. I got the model to a point that I wanted to look at. I'll switch it to parallel for real. And let's say I want this corner view. Maybe I want to get the back corner this time. And I zoom right in on it and maybe I want to look at this specific corner right here and I get it exactly like I like it. I, I want all of those columns in, in the image. And I want to take my camera shot from right here, but if I use the camera command and I try to put a camera in, you notice that it, it that you have to pick a location, but it's not going to let me pick you know, my, my seat where I'm sitting from. Um, a really cool trick to get um, to get the view that you're looking at right here is to enter the view command and go in and create a new view through the view manager. And you can say, this is my um, new camera view. And then from here, um, we will go in and change our visual style to something interesting. We'll change it to conceptual. We can change our background color. Um, let's change it to a gradient. Um, maybe we want something, you know, a, a fade from gray to gray. We'll say OK. And then once you've created it, you can come in here. And it's just going to start out as a regular named view. But if you switch it right away to that perspective view, turn that on, apply, and OK. And then we'll go back in and we'll find it new camera view. Now we have our camera and it's exactly, it's from exactly where we were pointing um, so that we see that view instead of having to go in and eyeball the camera and um, figure out exactly where you were looking at um, at the model from. And it just makes it much easier to place them um, while you're modeling on the fly. Martin, do you have anything to add? Technique. Oh, that's a great technique because setting up cameras takes practice. It can be tricky, and a lot of us are just more adept at using the Orbit Cube and zooming and, and figuring out how we want to view the model. So that's a great shortcut of being able to convert that view to a camera without having to set up the camera. And then once it's made into that camera view, then you can tweak it all you want with the properties. And so just a great tip. I'm trying to find the view now. All right, so I've lost my camera again, but it uh, it will jump into the model if you don't turn perspective on first, if you turn perspective on after you've created the view. Um, so if you turn perspective on first, maybe we want a wider shot of the whole building like this or something. And we'll zoom in and get that wider shot here. And where we already have perspective on, we've turned it on by the view cube here, selecting perspective. Um, if I create a view now, it's going to have that setting already in there. Um, 
we'll just call this a new perspective. There we go. Say OK. Now you notice it's already on, and now my camera won't jump into the bottle when I turn the, uh, the perspective view on. There we go. You see, now that camera is exactly where I was sitting. And if I go back to that camera view, again, right click and set camera view, it goes exactly where I want it to go. All right. So I, um, I do have one more trick up my sleeve that I would like to show if I have a couple minutes. Do you think I have time, Martin? Go for it. All right. I'm going to set this back to front parallel. There we go. All right. I like this view a lot. Um, if you notice, I'm just going to swivel this around a little bit. If you can see the... Oh, this one's making it really hard to see. Um, if you're having trouble getting into the model here, um, if, if you can't see it well, you can quickly change your visual style on the fly from this little drop-down menu right in the model space window. Um, so I'm just going to change it to hidden so that we can see all the pieces. And then you can actually see your views from here too. So right next to that visual style drop-down, it says custom view because I've, um, I use 3D Orbit to move the model around a little. If you click on custom view and uh, go to custom model views, you'll see all of your cameras and all of your named views in here too. So it's a really easy way to get to those views without having to go into the view manager or dig through the, uh, the ribbon to try to find your views drop down in the panel there. Um, so the last thing here is uh, an animation. And what I've done, and I've created this already because it takes a little while um, to get it right, but I've created a spline that um, goes along the balcony here, up through the stairs, into the building, and does a little animation. And I've animated a camera by using the Anapath command. I'll type it in here so you can see it. There's Anapath, and it'll bring up this dialog box for motion path animation. The other place you can find this is on the Visualize tab. I lied, I can't find it. Okay, <laughs> um, we're just gonna use the Anapath command because we're running short on time here. It is in there somewhere though. Um, so Anapath brings up your motion animation path dialog box and it lets you pick a path. And I'm just going to select this path that I created. And we'll call it path three. And then I'm going to select a target. And if you're selecting the same path, that spline, as, a, as the same uh, as a target and the, um, the camera, you will just have to select it twice because you can't pick the same named path. Uh, so it's a little trick to get around that. Uh, you can set your frame rate, so 30 frames per second. It's going to have 600 frames, and then it's going to be 20 seconds long. You can pick the visual style here from the drop-down of visual styles in your drawing. I picked sketchy because it's quicker, um, but you can do an actual rendered video. It just takes a lot longer to process. You can pick from AVI, MPG, or WMV as the formats. And there's a bunch of different re resolutions that you can pick from. Uh, corner deceleration will do exactly that. It decelerates the camera as you go around the corner. Uh, you can put the camera in reverse if you feel like it's going the wrong way on that path. And then we can look at a preview. And the preview goes along the path. You can see it moving there. It's just going to show us a quick preview of that. I'm going to attempt to play the 20 second video. I'm just going to escape to get out of this. Oh, here we go. So it's showing me the uh, the animation preview. I'm hoping that that comes through GoToMeeting. If it doesn't, I'll provide the file, uh, the final WMV file in the data set, so you can take a look at the uh, the actual video. But that's the, the animation preview here. And then once it finishes, you can come in here, click OK, I'm not going to do that right now because then it's going to sit here and bog down my computer trying to create a video um, while we're presenting, and we don't want to do that. Uh, but if you click OK, it will create the video for you. 
And I think that's all I've got, Martin. Very cool. Do you Thank have anything you else Victoria. to add? Um, I think we'll switch back over to our uh, PowerPoint slides. Good plan. Let me know when you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Okay, so just to point out, we do have lots of additional topics and resources that you can pursue as a follow-up to our webinar, and all these links are live in the um, slide deck that we'll make available to you. And then, of course, our Autodesk Knowledge Network has lots of articles that you can follow up with uh, this subject, as well as get your software updated with service packs and um, also other quick links there to check out all of this, again, in our slide deck. And then we have an answer day for Inventor coming up. So if any of you are interested in Inventor, and there's some great workflows that um, interface with AutoCAD there, Please join us for our answer day on January 27th. These answer days have been fantastic so far for AutoCAD and for Revit, so this one should be just as good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. I would like to uh, go ahead and, and open one last poll, if we can. And that is coming up here in just a minute. Did you learn something new in today's session? And give you a few more seconds to answer that and I'm going to go ahead now and close that poll and we'll share the results so Victoria you'll be glad to know that it was overwhelmingly yes and there were a few experts in the audience that didn't pick up anything new but hopefully they enjoyed it as well but 96 percent learned something new. I'm always so, happy to see that there's a couple people that that uh, that are expert enough to know this stuff already but I someday someday I'll I'll bring something that you haven't seen yet, I hope. I aspire to that. So we do uh, appreciate everyone joining us. Um, we do want to remind you of the link to sign up for uh, more webinars. And also at that site on our community forum is where you could post uh, follow-up questions uh, that we may not have gotten to in the presentation. So we do have a few moments left. Um, anyone is welcome to type in a question and we'll see if we can stump Victoria here at the last minute. Any questions? So we will be making the slide deck, the data set that we Victoria was using. And I, I think I heard you say, Victoria, that you uh, were going to post the um, animation. Yes, I recorded a um, just a quick animation of that same path that you'll find in the data set. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think uh, Windows Media Player is going to play very well over GoToWebinar, so um, I will include that in the data set if you want to check it out afterwards. Um, it, should be up, up late, uh, it should be uploaded either this afternoon or tomorrow, uh, so check that box folder. That's uh, the link's right in the webinar um, PowerPoint slide, and it should be sent to you uh, in an email afterwards as well. Excellent. And, and can you just reiterate please, how this might apply to LT users, what the limitations might be for AutoCAD LT? We have one minute left. Oh, yes. Um, for LT users, and I believe Volker covered this in a Beyond the Basics or Back to Basics uh, session last year, um, you can save a view. Let's say you're working in a 2D plan. Um, and let's say you need to zoom in on a piece of furniture or a particular office in a really large plan, you can zoom in on it and save that view and name it, you know, office number 12. And that way, you know, if you do a lot of work in that one part of the plan, you can always zoom back to that particular view that you're um, always trying to find in a really big file. That's how I would use it. Excellent. And then can you, in a nutshell, tell us what we can look forward to in the next Third Dimension webinar in four weeks? Yes. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, sections. Sorry, that sounds like a question for me. We're going to be talking I about sections. <laughs> you did. Okay. Um, it should be section views, and I think we're going to touch on point clouds. Um, yes. Okay. I believe, awesome. I believe well, we're going to touch on point clouds. 
Well, we certainly hope everyone returns, and we thank you for joining us today. And that concludes this IQ webinar, AutoCAD IQ of the Third Dimension. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. Bye.